The majority of Egyptologists agree on the outline in many details of the chronology of ancient Egypt. This scholarly consensus is the so-called conventional Egyptian chronology, which places the beginning of the Old Kingdom in the 27th century BC, the beginning of the Middle Kingdom in the 21st century BC and the beginning of the New Kingdom in the mid-16th century BC. Despite this consensus, disagreements remain within the scholarly community resulting in variant chronologies diverging by about 300 years for the early dynastic period, up to 30 years in the New Kingdom, and a few years in the Late Period. In addition, there are a number of alternative chronologies outside of scholarly consensus, such as the New Chronology, proposed in the 1990s, which lowers New Kingdom dates by as much as 350 years, or the Glasgow chronology, which lowers New Kingdom dates by as much as 500 years. Overview Scholarly consensus on the general outline of the conventional chronology current in Egyptology has not fluctuated much over the last 100 years. For the Old Kingdom, consensus fluctuates by as much as a few centuries, but for the Middle and New Kingdoms, it has been stable to within a few decades. This is illustrated by comparing the chronology as given by two Egyptologists, the first writing in 1906, the second in 2000. The disparities between the two sets of dates result from additional discoveries and refined understanding of the still very incomplete source. Evidence for example, Breasted adds a ruler in the 20th dynasty that further research showed did not exist. Following Manithor, Breasted also believed all the dynasties were sequential, whereas it is now known that several existed at the same time. These revisions have resulted in a lowering of the conventional chronology by up to 400 years at the beginning of dynasty the first regnal years. The backbone of Egyptian chronology are the regnal years as recorded in ancient Egyptian king lists. Surviving king lists are either comprehensive but have significant gaps in their text, or are textually complete but fail to provide a complete list of rulers, even for a short period of Egyptian history. It is further complicated by occasional conflicting information on the same regnal period from different versions of the same text thus. The Egyptian historian Manetho's history of Egypt is only known by extensive references to it made by subsequent writers, such as Eusebius and Sextus Julius Africanus, and the dates for the same pharaoh often vary substantially depending on the intermediate source. Regnal periods have to be pieced together from inscriptions, which will often give a date in the form of the regnal year of the ruling pharaoh which will only ascertain a minimum reign length and may or may not include any co-regencies with a predecessor or successor. Not knowing whether monarchies were simultaneous or sequential may lead to widely differing chronological interpretations. Where the total number of regnal years for a given ruler is not known, Egyptologists have identified two indicators to provide that total number. For the Old Kingdom, the number of cattle censuses, and for later periods, the celebration of a said festival. A number of Old Kingdom inscriptions allude to a periodic census of cattle, which experts at first believed took place every second year, thus records of as many as 24 cattle censuses indicates Neferu had reigned 48 years. However, further research has shown that these censuses were sometimes taken in consecutive years, or after two or more years had passed. The said festival was usually celebrated on the 30th anniversary of the pharaoh's ascension. Thus rulers who recorded recording one could be assumed to have ruled at least 30 years. However, once again, this may not be the usual practice in all case. This was most pervasive before the mid-19th century, when Manetho's figures were recognized as conflicting with biblical chronology based on Old Testament references to Egypt. In the 20th century, such biblical bias has mostly been confined to alternative chronologies outside of scholarly mainstream synchronisms. A useful way to work around these gaps in knowledge is to find chronological synchronisms, which can lead to a precise date. 
Over the past decades, a number of these have been found, although they are of varying degrees of usefulness and reliability. Seriation, i.e., archaeological sequences. While this does not fix a person or event to a specific year, by establishing a sequence of events can provide indirect evidence to provide or support a precise date. For example, a number of inscribed stone vessels of the rulers of the first two dynasties were collected and deposited in storage galleries beneath the steppe. Pyramid of Djoser, a pharaoh of the Third Dynasty, which were sealed off by the construction of that building. Another example are blocks from the Old Kingdom bearing the names of several kings, which were reused in the construction of Middle Kingdom pyramid temples at Lisht in the structures of Amenemhat I. Likewise, the third pylon at Karnak, built by Amenhotep III, contained as fill material from the kiosk of Sesostris I, along with various stelae of the Second Intermediate Period and the 18th Dynasty of the New Kingdom. Synchronisms with other chronologies, the most important of these being with the Assyrian and Babylonian chronologies, although synchronisms with the Hittites, ancient Palestine, and in the final period with ancient Greece are also used. The earliest such synchronism appears in the 18th century BC where a stellar of the governor of Byblos Yantinu indicates that Pharaoh Neferhotep I was contemporary with kings Zimri Lim of Mari and Hammurabi of Babylon. Other early synchronisms date to the 15th century BC, during the Armana period, when we have a considerable quantity of diplomatic correspondence between the Egyptian kings Amenhotep III and Akhenaten, and various Near Eastern monarchs. Synchronisms with inscriptions relating to the burial of Apis bulls begin as early as the reign of Amenhotep III and continue into Ptolemaic times. But there is a significant gap in the record between Ramesses XI and the 23rd year of Asorkon II. The poor documentation of these finds in the Serapium also compounds the difficulties in using these records. Astronomical Synchronisms the best known of these is the Sothic cycle, and careful study of this led Richard A. Parker to argue that the dates of the 12th dynasty could be fixed with absolute precision. More recent research has eroded this confidence, questioning many of the assumptions used with the Sothic cycle, and as a result experts have moved away from relying on this cycle. For example, Donald B. Redford, in attempting to fix the date of the end of the 18th dynasty, almost completely ignores the Sothic evidence relying on synchronicities between Egypt and Assyria, and help from astronomical observations, radiocarbon dating. This is useful especially for the early dynastic period, where Egyptological consensus has only been possible within a range of about three or four centuries. A 2013 study found a first dynasty start in the 32nd or 31st century compatible with scholarly opinions placing it in between the 34th and 30th centuries. The Thera Eruption This is a famous conundrum not just in Egyptian but also in Aegean chronology, as the radiocarbon date for the eruption, between 1627 and 1600 BC, is off by a full century compared to the date traditionally accepted in archaeology of c. 1500 BC. Since 2012, there have been suggestions that the solution lies in adjustment of both dates towards a compromise date in the mid-16th century BC. But as of 2014 the problem has not been satisfactorily resolved. Dendrochronology there have been occasional opportunities to use dendrochronology to support Egyptian chronology, mostly for the New Kingdom period, e.g., the Ulubur and Shipwreck. Combined use of dendrochronology and radiocarbon dating allowed identification of tree rings even back to the Middle Kingdom period, as in the coffin of Ipi Har issued to for the funerary boat of Senusret III. Alternative chronologies A number of suggestions for alternatives to the consensus on the conventional chronology have been presented during the 20th century. The revised chronology of Emanuel Velikovsky is postulated in his Ages in Chaos series. 
The chronology of Donovan Corville as described in the Exodus problem and its ramifications. The Glasgow chronology formulated by members of Velikovsky's Society for Interdisciplinary Studies in 1978. The new chronology of David Roll, as described in his Test of Time series.